All right, so in today's video, I'm going to try something, and that is connecting the DS920, which is running DSM7, to the zero tier network using this set of instructions that were sent to me by a viewer, David Grishko. Now, David saw my original video where I had connected the DS216 plus 2 to the zero tier network, but that was running DSM6, and it had a third party utility that I was able to install on that device. However, that said, on DSM-7, it is suggested to run zero tier in a Docker container because as posted here by the zero tier network themselves, this is their help document. It says Synology's DSM-7 doesn't allow third party apps to run as root. Therefore, we now recommend using Docker to run zero tier. While this is somewhat inconvenient at first, it is undeniably a safer way to run third-party applications on your NAS. Once set up, this configuration will be persistent across reboots and DSM upgrades. So we're going to go ahead and try to follow these directions that David sent over to me and see if we can get the DS920 Plus on DSM7 connected to my zero-tier network. So stay tuned and let's see how it goes. Okay, so I have the zero tier help doc up on the screen to the left. I have my terminal window open here on the right. And we're just gonna follow these steps as best as we can. That said, I am not a Linux kind of guy. I have very limited skills in the command line. I probably know enough just to be dangerous. But uh, that said, we're gonna follow these instructions to the best that we can. And I hope the point here is that if you just follow, copy, and paste, you'll be able to get zero tier running up on your network as well. So let's start. It says here we need to SSH into our NAS. So one of the first things we have to do is come over to the NAS and enable SSH because by default it is disabled. So we're going to come into the control panel here. We're going to come down to where it says terminal and SNMP. We're going to click on enable SSH service port 22 and say apply. Now we do get a warning here. This is modifying system configurations, executing external binary files or installing unauthorized third party applications via the terminal commands may result in unexpected system behavior, behavior or even data loss. So they're just giving us a warning here. We're going to go ahead. We have to enable it to in order to follow the zero tier guidelines. So let's go ahead and click on OK. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and get signed into our NAS. Okay, so now that we're signed in, the next step is to run the steps here in the help document as root. So let me switch to full screen so you can see it better. And we're just going to come over here and we're going to copy this command here, sudo i Come over to the terminal and paste it in and hit return. And it's asking for the password because we're requesting root permissions. And now you can see here it changed the prompt from Tony Smiraldi at DS920 lab to root at DS920 lab. So now we're in as root. Next step is to write the script to the NAS. So we're just going to take this command here starting with echo and we're going to copy it. And again, paste it into the terminal and hit return. And that's a good sign. If we get the prompt, that means the co previous command was executed successfully without error. Next, we're going to set the executable permissions on the script. So we're going to do the change mod. We're going to copy that command. Come over to the terminal again, paste. And again, it looks like we were successful changing the permissions. Run script once to create the tunnel. So. I have tested this. I tested this on the DS216 plus two and I did get an error message. Let's see what we get here. Oh, so we're good to go here. So it did take that command. So excellent. Now we're going to check this for the tunnel. So we're going to do the list command here. We're going to say copy. And the result that we received here in the orange amber color says slash dev slash net slash ton 
And that's exactly what it's showing we should do here. So, so far, so good. The next step says to install Docker on the NAS. We need to go to the package center and install the Docker container software. So let's click back over to the DS920. Let me make this just a little bit bigger so you can see this. And we're going to come up to the package center here and we're going to just search for Docker. And you can see here we have the Docker app and we're just going to click on install. Okay, so now that the Docker app has been installed, let's click on Docker. And you can see here it is running. If we open it, just gives us a welcome to Docker screen. But what we're looking at is this here. You can see that the Docker is running. And if I go to the container tab, you can see we don't have any containers listed here. Once we finish the zero tier steps, we should have a running container listed here. So we're going to come back to this and check when we're all done. If you're enjoying this type of content, please hit that like button. It just helps get the video out to more viewers. Now let's get back to the process. Next, we're going to make a directory to store zero tiers identity and configuration. So we're going to use the make directory command. And we're just going to copy it. And we're going to come over to here paste it in. And now we've made the directory successfully for zero tier. The next command is actually making the Docker container and it's going to make the container named ZT for zero tier. So again, we're simply just going to come over and copy this, come over to the terminal and paste. And it looks like it created the container successfully. Now we can, I guess, go double check in the Synology and see if the container is actually running and then come back and finish these steps. So let's come over to here. Let's open Docker. And let's come over to the container. And here you can see now we have the zero tier container and it is up and running. So that's ex excellent. That's exactly what we want. Now it says here, previous versions of our package contained a GUI. However, this is no longer the case and it is for the better. The CLI can be used as follows. So we can view the node status. Let's copy this command here. Let me do a clear screen so we can just continue up at the top. And let's paste in the view node status command. And it's telling us here that the node is online. So the next step is to join our zero tier network. I'm just going to copy my zero tier ID. Okay, so now I'm going to type this next command in manually up until this point here. And then I'm going to replace this sample zero tier ID with my network ID. So let's go ahead and type that in manually. Okay, so now we have the command in there. Let me just double check it that I didn't mistype anything. And now we got the confirmation. It says join is okay. Next, we're going to authorize the NAS on the network. So what we're going to do now is we got to jump back to zero tier. It should appear in the zero tier network. I'm going to give this a few minutes. Because when I tested it on the DS216 plus two, it did take a few minutes for the NAS to appear on the zero tier network. Okay, so it didn't take as long as it did for the DS216 plus two to appear. The DS920 plus appeared pretty quickly. I'm in my zero tier network. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see the devices that I already have connected here. My iMac, my DS216 plus two, and my MacBook Pro. And here is the latest. And you can see it does say it's online. Now these two devices are offline at the moment, but this device is online and it's the only unidentified one. And it is the DS216 plus, I'm um, sorry, it is the DS920 plus. So I'm just going to call it DS920 plus. I'm just going to give it a name here. And notice here, these devices have a solid green line. 
but the DS920 Plus has a dotted red line, a dashed line. That's because it hasn't been authorized yet. And that was the next step in the zero tier help document is to come into zero tier and authorize the NAS. So in order to get it authorized, we just have to select it here. And that's all there is to it. It should eventually uh, register. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back here. And the next step after we've authorized the NAS on the network, let me switch back to full screen so you can see this, is to just view the network status. So we're going to copy this command here into the terminal window. And hopefully, if all goes well, we should see a status here. So it is showing the NAS and it is showing it here with a 192.168.196.88 address. So that being said, we should be able to now connect to the NAS. I'm going to skip the last two optional steps. So let me switch back and let's make this full screen here for you guys. And we're just going to go in and I'm going to copy the address here, 192.168.196.88. And we should be able to sign into the Synology now using the zero tier address. So I'm normally on a 192.168.50 network here at the studio. You can see I'm using 192.168.196, which is the IP address designed by the zero tier network. So if we click on OK to proceed, there's the DS920 Plus. And if I sign in, you can see now that I am successfully signed into the DS920 through the zero tier network. So there you go, it was a series of multiple steps to get the Synology connected to the zero tier network. And I just wanted to show that if I can do it, I'm not a Linux guy, I'm not a command line guy. Like I said earlier, I know a little bit just enough to be dangerous. But the point is, if you can follow instructions and copy and paste, you should be able to get your Synology NAS connected to a zero tier network. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, go ahead and smash that like button. Be sure to check out a few other videos that I have listed up above. Remember to subscribe, like, and share the video. And I want to thank you for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel, and we'll see you all next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters, and if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.